Good morning. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream for September 16th. We're talking about the magic of capos today. And Facebook has changed this thing, so I'm just making sure if you want to watch this on Facebook, you got to, it doesn't show up on the side for the managing of the page anymore, but under more, you can find videos. And here is today's video live. All right. And turn you down so that I can make you go live. And here we are. So we talked last week at quite length about drones and what happens with the diatonic system of the mountain dulcimer with its drones. <clears throat> and so what then, and that was the way to play, and I showed the dulcimer I have that has the fence staples under just a couple of frets, and, um, and then it's got extra frets that go across all the way. Well, what happened when you have frets that go all the way across is it allows you to make chords and, and change not just the melody string, but change the, the strings that would be normally used as a drone also. That also meant that people started experimenting, I believe this was in the 70s, and using chopsticks, for example, as a capo, something that you could just put across the strings and tie on to the back that changed all the strings at once. So it meant I was changing my drone strings to line up with whatever I was doing melodically. And so, for example, <clears throat> and uh, George Haggerty created um, the, uh, it was sweet, excuse me, it was molded black. It was a one piece thing that was a capo, and right now I'm forgetting the... But anyway, George, I don't remember George Haggerty's name. Hey, Gary, how are you? I hope your show went good. We were out of... We were not even anywhere near telephone or... <laughs> or uh, internet over the weekend, so I hope it went well. So he created a thing um, that's sweet in the name. And when you put that across the frets at a particular place, it changes everything. It changes the melody and it changes the drones. And uh, then Ron Ewing started making these uh, beautiful, very elegant, simple capos. Ron Ewing capo. It's got wood, one piece wood construction, and then uh, sometimes a cover piece for strength or for appearance. This one's walnut. He makes one with cherry and ebony. And then there's some plastic underneath. That's what actually touches the strings. And you put that on right behind the fretboard. There's the fretboard right behind the fret. And now I've changed everything. I was tuned to a 158 tuning. I'm still tuned to a 158 tuning. But because, because my scale now cannot go any lower than one. are going along and I'm playing basically in an aeolian mode or the natural minor mode. If I move my drones that's at the first fret to the second fret I've got the equivalent of the locrian mode. And I had a student who wrote a piece in that place and played it for my recital in my studio in Fort Collins. And one of the other students said, that's what I was a missionary in Turkey for a year. And that's what it sounded like the whole time we were there. And you'll notice that there was some not clarity. So I've got 
got to make sure that when I'm putting it down, that all the strings are being held at the same. So that they're not buzzing. Then when I move up to the third fret, that would be the Locrian. Now I'm back to, to Ionian, which is what I expect. I expect to have everything everything is designed on the mountain dulcimer so to go from three to ten in the major scale. So now I'm just doing I was tuned to one five eight. I've got one five eight now. And my instrument is um, tuned to, I believe this one's tuned to G. Talon, you have a question. What do you do when a part of the capo touching the fret starts getting grooves in it and there's creating a buzz? So one of the things that I'm doing right now is reverse the capo to see if that makes a difference. If you have a... fourth fret that was Ionian now I'm going to be this is tune GDG yes Doug and I'm going to call this this is my constant crusade GDG because the high G is an octave lower or octave higher now if I use this the difference here is if I use my six and a half fret get the mixed Lydian scale of A because I have a major third but a flat and seven. Do re mi fa so la te do te la so fa mi re do. But if I use the six instead of six and a half, I get the Dorian mode which is the mountain minor. The what do we do with the mountain sailor? What do we do with the mountain sailor? Scarborough Fair, I'm going to Scarborough Fair, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, the man that needs to want to live there, she wants one or two of her mind. So, uh, I have to go to the, because typically the, the all the minor modes, have a step below do, a whole a whole step away from do, the flat seven. I have to go to the middle string to get that note. When I'm retuning, I have it on the melody string, so that's a change that happens when I use the capo. And uh, Talon, I haven't forgotten your question, but the first thing was to flip the capo around and see if that made a difference. <clears throat> now, if I do it at the fifth fret. Now, the Phrygian mode with a flatted two, a flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. Or regular five, sorry. One, flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, eight. Then if I go to the sixth fret, I've got the Lydian scale and the drones line up for everything. This sounds almost normal as an Ionian scale. 
except the fourth step of the scale is raised. That's the Lydian note. So that's the magic of what the capo can do when you move it to different frets. That's not all that we have. And I want to get to um, the Talon's question. Are some better materials to prevent grooves? Um, <clears throat> this is, Brian Ewing uses very hard, uh, hard plastic, and but if I look at it with the light shining at an angle, I can see where the grooves have lined, lined in the middle. This one is uh, a Clemmer capo. These were made uh, by a friend of Mike Clemmer's, and especially, it's got a wider jaw. I don't know if you can see. On the outside, they're the same, but on the inside, Let's open this. Is open these both as wide as they'll go. And if I put the inside surfaces, you can see that. I don't know if you can see that, but the Ewing cable is a little bit narrower. The one on the bottom is the Clemmer capo and it's got a wider jaw or wider throat so that it can fit. <clears throat> well, I guess I have one on here already. David Myrie has a wider fretboard and the capo fits on the wider fretboard just fine. But the Ewing capo won't fit. I can try to get it on there, but it's it's I can't tighten anything because it's as wide as it's gonna go and it doesn't fit. fretboard or having a capo that is wide enough for your neck is important when you're looking measure your neck and see ask the maker if the capo is going to fit that now the, the other reason to, to mention this is because this has got a hard rubber in it I can't remember the man name of the man who makes these for Mike um, I've met him before but I just can't remember um, But he's got some he's got some walnut in glued to the brass and then the rubber glued to the walnut all the way around. Uh, Ron has the screw just pushing the piece of hard plastic forward. And if it's you can flip it around, there's a way to flip it around as wear happens. <clears throat> um, cork is soft. Rubber is soft, the hard plastic is harder. So um, the rubber will rebound after some use, but it will not necessarily um, repair. The plastic, once it gets grooved, is gonna be grooved. And um, cork is gonna be soft. It may rebound, but it's gonna be soft. Um, so Terry McCafferty has created this new one that's all of a composite material, which is, it's got steel, it's got metal and it's got plastic. And it's got a, a spinning, well, it's supposed to spin, yeah. It's got a spinning roll in the middle so that it could, and it, this one can go on the, if, here's the other thing, this one's feet are too long to work on this instrument because the fretboard has got a low profile. So when it's all the way on the fretboard, it doesn't touch the strings. So I have to use it on a different instrument. I want to do it over here, yeah. So I can use the McCaffrey on, on the McSpadden just fine. But because the, the thing in the middle spins, as there gets to be grooves, I can spin it and that, that adds to the uh, life of the capo. 
So on that one, it works. This is my Robert Stevens fingerstyle instrument. So this is a hard rubber that he has got going over the metal piece with plastic jaws and it spins so that you can, as wear happens, you can adjust it. So I think that gets to the question, Talon, of what you're talking about. Now, without buying a new capo, the other thing you can do is put a thin layer of something in between the capo and the strings as a way to extend the life of your capo. Um, my experience with the, the uh, sweet sound, maybe the sweet sound capos, is over time they started to bow up. It was a single molded piece and it would bow up in the, and the outside edges would not be as, as, uh, as low as they used to be. The wood has remained steady. There is also a Dudley capo, a brass capo that re has like a clamp action. Um, and you can, you can adjust the thickness. The thing to be careful of is the clamp is very strong. If you have a fretboard that's made out of three pieces to make sure it's hollow in the inside, you want to make sure you don't over tighten it and, and uh, injure your fretboard. So the, this, is, this is what's going on with the capo and all these different ways. The other thing Terry does, because there are more people that are using um, or are having instruments built with a radius fretboard because they like to play over the top, Aaron O'Rourke, Aaron May Lewis um, are people that you like to have radius fretboards. And then when they play with their pinky as the bar, it doesn't have to flatten out unnaturally. It can have its, gen its actual normal bend to it as they're playing. So the fret fretboard is slightly radius. This one is not, but Robert Stevens definitely makes one like this. So does David Beatty. Um, and Folk Roots is making a radius fretboard too. Um, so McCaffrey also makes a radius capo for radius fretboards. So that's the, that's the coolness about that. Now, the other thing I want to show you about the magic of the, of the capo, and this is when, you know, we'll debate which tuning is the more natural and which one do I like and all those things. We can do that for ages. In a 158 tuning, I'm tuned to DAD right now. When I put the cape, well, if I play my first position chords, get you out of the way there. So 002 is a one chord or a D. These are the boiled cabbage down chords, D, which is a one chord. If I play a 013, I've got the four chord. And if I play a 101, I've got a five chord. If I play a 0, 1, 2, I've got the 6 minor chord. And then if I um, play 1, 1, 3, I've got the 3 minor chord. If I play 2, 2, 2 away from the nut, I've got the 3 minor chord. So I've got all 6 of the 7 chords, the ones that normally show up. Not familiar with that. That's interesting to know, Talon. Thanks for letting me know that. Now, when I put the capo on at the first fret, well, let's go to the third fret first. And I'll explain why I'm doing that. Here's the magic of the capo. If I count away from, we don't, when we put a capo on, we do not renumber the frets. This is now, we just don't have access to zero are all the way to the nut, one, one and a half, two. Everything starts at three, but because we, we're not putting a finger down, three becomes renumbered to zero. Other than that, everything else stays the same. Zero, four, five, six and a half, seven, eight. That's how it's gonna be talked about. 
in the music that's written. We don't renumber. But if we remember the shape that we used before, it can be very useful for us. 002 away from the capo. Let's buzz you a little bit. Let's see what you do. See if you're buzzy too. You're not. Okay. So 002 is like the one chord here, and now it's the one chord in my new key. I was a D before, now I'm a G. If I play 013 away from the capo, it's like playing 013 away from the nut. That's my four chord. In the key of G, my four chord is a C. A 346 is a C if I was not playing with a capo. And then the five chord, or D, 404, is like playing 101. So I'm using the same shapes. This is the magic that works here. I'm going to have the predictable same results. If I play a 1-1-3, one, one, I'm going to get a minor chord. In this case, it's A minor. And if I'm going to play 0-1-2, um, I'm going to get another minor chord. In this case, it's the E minor chord. And if I play 2-2-2 two, two, two away, which is actually 5-5-5, five, 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 I'm going to get the other minor chord. In this case, B minor. That's cool. It's predictable. Everything I did at open is going to work at the third fret with the capo in the same way that it did before. Now, if I go to the fourth fret where we did before, but I don't use six and a half, or six, I use six and a half. That's my two away. I get the same predictable results, but now everything is in A. So there's the one chord A, the two chord, or the four chord D, the five chord E, and the the 113, which is the 2 minor, 6 and a half all the way across the 3 minor, and the 012 is the 6 minor of that key. So the magic is I move the capo to from, I don't use a capo, I get one set, I get the expected things, I go to 3, I get the expected things, I go to 4, if I'm using 6 and a half, I get the expected things. Now, if I go to 1, and do the same thing, it's going to be the same relationships, but now because everything is in a minor relationship, so here's my one minor chord, my four major chord, my one minor chord, and my five minor chord, which is typical of the A the Aeolian scale or mode. Some people have done that and call it boil and borscht because they're playing boil and cabin down the same shapes that they're familiar with. But it sounds different. That same thing will work at the fourth fret if I use six instead of six and a half. Capo is also useful if you want to explore what would a song I play normally in a major key. I go to one or four. When if I'm at four, I use the six fret instead of six and a half. I'm going to get a minor version of that same song. So the capo, <clears throat> it, on a guitar or a chromatically fretted instrument, when you add the capo, everything happens predictably just a step higher. Because of the diatonic fretboard of a mountain dulcimer, it happens <clears throat> in a similar fashion, but in not exactly the same fashion, because when you get to a different place starting, you've also got a different mode. You're making your drones line up so you don't retune anything. You're using your capo to do that. So it also involves some sleight of hand magic <laughs> to, um, to, to remember in your head what's going on. You don't have the notes below do that you were expecting 
for example. Now, I'm going to share my screen. Because on dulcimer crossing, we have this lesson <clears throat> called the capo. If you go to the skills for mountain dulcimer section and you look at what's available here, you find capo and then click go. And you can see that we've got lessons for the DAA tuning, what happens when you use a capo. And then we also have lessons for the DAD tuning, what happens when you use a capo with and without the six and a half fret. Now, let me see if you have any questions. Like I mentioned last week, I'm wearing my Music Together shirt because th today starts my first online Zoom classes with my Music Together kids. And so the uh, live, the live stream is going to have to be shorter every Wednesday while this session is in place so that I can move things and get things ready because this has got to be a singing and dancing space. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I've got to prepare and set up for that and be ready for that class to welcome all those people in. and let them welcome each other because they haven't seen each other. We have not been in the same space or been live since um, before the pandemic started in March. We finished all of our music together, the spring session, we finished it uh, doing videos online. We did our summer all online. Now in the fall, we're doing some online and then some via Zoom. So it's a new thing. So this, the live stream will be ending at, I'll have 30 minutes every, every Wednesday morning. So in the past, I would go, you know, all the way up to an hour, but I won't have time for that uh, going forward for this, this period of time. But if you have further questions, you can always ask them on the uh, video that's, that's uh, archived on the Facebook page. I know Facebook has changed its, its, again, changed its appearance and finding where things are looks a little different than it might have before. Um, I know as the page manager, when I go looking, it's a little hard to find some things. <laughs> um, but this will be, this video will be archived. Hi, Deborah. This video will be archived here on the Delsmer Crossing Facebook page. It's also archived on our Dulcimer Crossing site. Let me share that screen again. And that's on the premium members of the live events page. So this one is going to be <clears throat> showing up here like these other ones have. And premium members get to log in and have access to those. I also just want to remind you while I'm here that next Thursday, we're going to be blessed to have Karen Ashbrook with us for our um, monthly leap forward in your musical understanding, our year, year long focus to talk to us about the folk minor Dorian mode. She's a hammer dulcimer player. Aaron May Lewis and I will be here as um, interpreters to help everybody uh, talk about how that applies to mountain dulcimer and other instruments. If you have another, and Don Petty's coming up in uh, October, we're still uh, scheduling November, so that'll be a surprise. And then Aaron May and I, who kicked off the series at the beginning of the year, will finish everything on Thursday, or uh, Thursday in December. I think we picked the first Thursday. I don't know why it's not showing there. But premium members have access access to those things in the live feed. If you're on Facebook, you can find this part here. The uh, The live stream is only available for premium members. I mean, uh, the uh, Leap Forward is only available for premium members. The live stream as a column or a interactive kind of thing is available for anybody who watches the feed. 
And it's also archived on our YouTube channel, uh, the Dulcimer Crossing YouTube channel. If you have any suggestions for what you'd like to, to address in the coming time, the coming weeks, please write to me at Steve at Dulcimer Crossing. Yes, Jane, Jim, it's like rotating the Delrin bridge caps on a hammer dulcimer when they start getting grooved and you have trouble tuning. But for right now, I'm going to sign off so I can start getting ready for my class. And uh, thank you for joining, joining today. It's good to have you all here. We'll see you next time.